so four stroke si engine so remember si is a spark ignition that's when whatever be the fuel burn inside the piston cylinder arrangement inside the engine if we are using a spark to burn that then it is called spark ignition and all spark ignition belongs to either your petrol engine or your gas engine that means lpg or cng gas so it required a spark but if we are talking about a diesel fuel so it don't require a spark it is a compression ignition so we will see how that compression ignition works in detail when that portion is covered right now we are focusing only on si engine spark ignition engine so in short or in general we can say spark ignition engine is a petrol engine so first we will see how to draw that schematic it is very important uh, we will try we will not to remember the diagram and we will not to recall the working we are not going to memorize the how it is working we will uh, understand how to draw that diagram and once you are able to draw the diagram definitely you will able to write about its work so let's start so line diagram will be there now the general concept we know that in any ic engine suppose your bike engine is there or petrol car engine is there we know that we have to supply fuel and that is the petrol gasoline but gasoline itself is unable to burn unless we provide a oxygen and for that oxygen we use uh, atmospheric air that means inside the piston cylinder arrangement there is a mixture of fuel and air and that is actually burn fuel having a calorific value that is heating value air don't have that calorific value but air having a oxygen which is utilized for burning of fuel and when fuel get burn along with air that is a mixture then we get a tremendous amount of heat inside the cylinder and that heat is utilized for mechanical work so basically we must have one cylinder so we will draw one cylinder here so straight line for this you may use a scale keep scale like this and use the two edges of that scale and draw straight lines so whenever you are drawing the second stroke using the same scale that means you each time you are able to draw the same size cylinders now at top we will connect it so this will be a cylinder now inside the cylinder there is a moving part sliding part that is called piston now if i am saying the piston is slide inside the cylinder that means there must be a clearance so whenever we are try to draw a piston always remember at least leave a single stroke gap so we are leaving here a single stroke gap so whatever with the pen or pencil you are using whatever with the stroke length or thickness is there just leave that thickness gap single stroke gap and draw a piston so this will be a piston why because many time i observe student draws such pictures this is cylinder and this is piston how it is going to work because there is so huge gap whatever be the compression supposed to be there it is going to leak out and many times second mistake i observe that student draw like this 
so in this diagram also there is no clearance it is not showing that your piston can move or slide inside the cylinder so always remember leave a single stroke gap in between cylinder and piston now suppose this is our piston cylinder arrangement now there must be some channel through which your fuel air mixture intake inside the cylinder to jo bhi aapne petrol air mixture banaya hai wo cylinder ke andar bhi jana chahiye so we will provide one passage to simply draw one passage through which fuel will enter so this is the passage now if i provide such open passage so fuel may enter any time it should be controlled when it is required then only it get open and allow the fuel and air mixture inside the cylinder so that work is done by a valve so there will be a valve now in first stroke i know that the suction takes place that means fuel and air must be stuck inside the piston cylinder arrangement so when i am drawing this wall i am just drawing this wall little bit inner so it will show that this opening is allowing fuel air mixture now imagine once this fuel air mixture inducted inside the piston cylinder arrangement after spark it get burned and all exhaust gases are there then we have to remove all these exhaust gases from the cylinder because our engine our vehicle having the same engine so once it get burned we have to remove all the exhaust gases for removal of exhaust gases we must provide another passage so this is the second passage through which all exhaust gases will be removed but if i keep it as it is open throughout the cycle then it is not going to help because whatever be the suction it may directly leak out so it should be again open and close with the pop valve and in first stroke it is remain close so my valve position will be close remember whenever you are drawing a wall so wall height must be the same it is not major the height but visually it must be the same the difference only is that it is showing this this close position and this is open position so this is our cylinder head having one passage for intake of air fuel mixture and second passage for removal of exhaust gas as we are talking about si engine spark ignition engine so no doubt that fuel will burn due to spark and spark is produced with the help of spark plug everyone knows that common part of si engine spark plug now how to draw that spark plug so draw one nut section for that draw three lines then join it so it will be a just like a nut then make one triangle shape and center electrode on bottom side there is center electrode and one l shape electrode so this become a spark plug so right now we have piston second cylinder this is exhaust valve this exhaust passage lateral arm connected to a silencer this is 
इनटेक वॉल और इनलेट वॉल नाउ दिस पैसेज इज कनेक्टेड टू योर कार्बोरेटर सो कार्बोरेटर प्रिपेरिंग दैट एयर फ्यूल मिक्सचर एंड सप्लाई अप टू दिस पैसेज व्हेन एवर वॉल गेट ओपन देन ओनली दैट एयर फ्यूल मिक्सचर सर इनसाइड द सिलेंडर and the center portion is a spark plug now piston can move or slide inside the cylinder in upward and downward motion only but our vehicle required a rotary motion so we have to draw crankshaft the crankshaft is the part which convert this reciprocating motion of piston into rotary motion so how to draw that so whatever be the piston center is there just draw a small circle this is piston circle center so i draw one small circle from this center draw one center line and after some distance draw another horizontal center line then considering this as a center we have to draw one circle but remember that circle diameter must be at least equal to this diameter your cylinder diameter so this must be there don't draw much larger diameter circle or very smaller diameter circle so this is the our circle this circle is known as crank shaft circle so crank circle now here we know that we have to suck air fuel mixture our petrol and air that is a fuel air so fuel air mixture is available here wall is open now that air fuel mixture must suck inside the cylinder and this will happen only when when there is a negative pressure inside the cylinder and to create a negative pressure all piston must be slide down and if piston slide down that means our crank shaft must pull it so in that case we have to draw a little bit bigger circle in this quadrant about 45 degree always remember engine always run that crankshaft is always run in a clockwise direction only vehicle can move forward or backward with the help of gear box but engine is always run in a clockwise direction so we draw one small circle at the bottom of piston then we draw a crankshaft circle then 45 degree we draw a bigger circle and this two circle we will join tangentially so join with this two circle tangentially so this is our connecting rod so this rod actually connect piston and crankshaft so this is called connecting rod now the last portion that is crankshaft how to draw that crankshaft in a very easy way this bigger circle draw two tangent line towards center two parallel tangent line towards center then outward remember this circle drawn is a circle of this center point when it is going to move it is tracing this circle but this crank shaft is little bit having a lesser diameter so 
drawing two lines parallel lines towards center then outward and now we have to make it as table tennis bat section just like a table tennis bat so this become a crank shaft now crank shaft is mounted so this is our crank shaft and as i said engine is always run in a clockwise direction now imagine when this crank is at this position top position so connecting rod will be straight when it is straight that will piston reach to the top position and the top position is called as top dead center this is called as top dead center in short it is said tdc why tdc because piston movement get dead that means piston cannot move ahead so this is the extreme top position piston can move upward 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 and it will dead here its motion will dead later on it can move down only but it can move ahead of this level this is the extreme top position of the piston so it is called top dead center and when this is at work when your crank is exact vertical here your connecting rod becomes straight vertical that time your piston reach to the extreme top position so this tdc may locate on this position also tdc so on crank shaft you can show this is the tdc point when this crank having this position so imagine this crank initially at this position your connecting rod is straight and your piston reach to top dead center and later on as engine we started that's when we uh, apply button start or we kick our vehicle that time we rotated this crank with the help of kick so as this crank start rotating clockwise so as it is moving like this so connecting rod will start pulling this piston down and as piston start moving down so on top side there will be a vacuum created and at the same with the mechanism we open this intake valve it is interlink interlink with this crank shaft and valve opening mechanism so when piston start moving towards bottom side at that time your intake valve get push in so your passage get open so piston start moving down negative pressure is created at the same time valve get open so due to that negative pressure whatever the pure air mixture available outside this valve start entering into the cylinder so this fresh air pure mixture will start entering into the cylinder and cylinder start filled with fresh air pure mixture and this crank continuously rotating in a clockwise direction when it reach to the bottom most position this portion when reach to the bottom most position that time you are connecting rod again become a straight but that time your connecting rod pulling your piston to the last bottom extreme position so imagine crank is rotating connecting rod pulling this piston your piston top will decrease 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 and the extreme position will reach where your crank reach to this point your connecting rod become straight again but your piston reach to bottom extreme most position and that bottom extreme most position is called as bdc so this is suppose bottom extreme most position 
this is BDC. When piston top reach to BDC, that means this much volume of cylinder is filled with fresh air and pure mixture. So during this stroke, piston is start moving from PDC to BDC. Piston is start moving from this crank PDC to crank BDC. So top dead center, bottom dead center, these are the extreme position of piston, which can be shown on cylinder position, vertical height wise, or we can show it on crank circle also. So during this stroke, piston is at PDC, it is start rotating, when it reach to PDC, that means exact 180 degree it covers. So it covers 180 degree. Piston wise, it start from top extreme position and reach to bottom extreme position. So the travel between these two extreme position is called as a stroke. As we are seeing, four stroke. So what is stroke? Stroke is nothing but a travel of piston from extreme position. So this is first stroke where it is traveling from PDC to BDC. When it is traveling from PDC to BDC, negative pressure is created at the same time, ball get open and fresh air fuel which will start inside the cylinder and this continue till piston reach to BDC. When piston reach to BDC, crank complete 180 degree, your cylinder completely filled with air fuel mixture at that time your intake valve will close at the beginning. So at the end of this whole process we found that the suction takes place, suction of air fuel mixture. So this stroke is called as suction stroke. So this is first stroke, suction stroke, where crank complete 180 degree, in terms of revolution we can say half revolution and your piston complete one complete stroke that is suction stroke. So this is the complete operation in suction stroke. Now how are you going to write the answer for this? If I am able to draw this diagram, if I am able to label this diagram, then what will be the explanation? Never memorize the explanation. Just watch this diagram and whatever be the observation on this diagram, just put it in words that will become your explanation. Now from this, what is, what is my write-up? So it will be in a suction stroke, piston start moving from PDC to BDC. When it start moving from PDC to BDC, negative pressure is created. At the same time, intake wall gate open. Due to negative pressure, Fresh air fuel mixture start to suck inside the piston cylinder arrangement and this will continue till piston reach to PDC. When piston reach to PDC, complete cylinder is filled with air fuel mixture. During this operation, exhaust valve remain closed, spark plug remain inactive. This process completed through a one stroke that is TDC to BDC during which crank rotated through 180 degree or half revolution 
and at the end of this suction stroke when piston reach to VDC your intake valve will close so initially exhaust valve close when piston reach to VDC intake valve close that means now the complete cylinder having only air fuel mixture it is entrapped now it can't move outside anywhere because exhaust valve already closed intake valve get closed when piston reach to VDC. So whatever be the observation of this diagram, whatever be the labeling and detailing on this diagram, you have to just write in a words that become your explanation. So never memorize how it is working. So this is first stroke. We are talking about four stroke. That means there must be a four travels. And in four travel of piston, it will complete one cycle. So this is first stroke. Now second stroke. We will draw second stroke now. And second stroke is a compression stroke. Now how to draw? Because we are representing same cylinder. So again we will use the same scale. Put it here and draw two lines. So first line. I am drawing free hand, so might be possible there will be a little bit variations in size. But when you use the same scale and drawing the two edges, they will become exact same. Then we are maintaining the same height. So this will be the top. Maintaining the same bottom. So this will be the bottom. Now there must be intake passage. This is connected to intake manifold later on. And that intake manifold is connected to carburetor. There must be exhaust passage which is going to connect with the silencer unit. There must be a spark plug. So in the same manner, we will draw spark plug, just like a pyramid shape, then this is center electrode and this is L shape ground electrode. Now intake valve and exhaust valve, in second stroke both are remaining closed. In first stroke intake valve open, exhaust valve closed, but in second stroke both are closed. Now, during drawing this, remember walls not going to shrink or elongate. So in each diagram, it must have the same size, don't shrink it. But this time, intake passage is get closed due to this wall. Exhaust passage also get closed due to this wall. So both wall closing the intake and exhaust passage. Now we have to draw a piston. So drawing the piston, draw the same position of piston. But as I said, leave a single stroke gap. So that it can visually, we can say that piston can slide inside the cylinder. So now piston can slide. Now the remaining portion we have to draw a small circle at center. Then all crankshaft assembly. So we will draw a center line. If this question asks in exam, so I will suggest draw all these strokes side by side. So I will use the scale and draw this horizontal line at the same level. I will use a compass and draw circle so it will be same size here might be possible there will be a little bit changes due to a freehand drawing but if you use this instrument so it will be exact replica now remember in suction stroke piston start moving from TDC and reach to BDC 
and as I said, engine always moves in a clockwise direction. So now piston is at VDC and it is starting moving upward. So we have to show a bigger circle in opposite to this quadrant. That means here, 45 degree. So this is small circle at the bottom of piston. This is bigger circle. If I join these two circle tangentially, so this become connecting rod. Don't change the position. We are showing piston at the center level. So what each time connecting rod length will be the same. It never happened that this time connecting rod length is this and later on it become increase or decrease. So almost connecting rod must be the same length. Now about uh, crankshaft. So as I said, draw two parallel lines towards center. Then outward and complete as a table that is bad section. This becomes crankshaft. It is always rotated in a clockwise direction. Always remember, it always rotated in a clockwise direction. This time I am not giving all the labelings. Okay, I give a first only. But later on, due to space management, I am not giving a labeling. But if it is asking your exam, you have to label all each and every diagram. Now here, somewhere at the top, it is called top dead center. That means piston cannot move beyond this limit. This is top dead center, extreme top position of piston. And somewhere at bottom, this is bottom dead center. If I am trying to show this TDC, so on crankshaft, TDC will be here and VDC will be here. Now imagine, at the end of suction stroke, piston is at TDC. Your whole cylinder volume filled with air pure mixture. That time your intake valve gets closed, the exhaust valve already closed. Now piston, piston will not hold here. It will start continuously rotating. So when piston cranks start rotating, that means you are still providing the power. With the help of button start or kick. So your crank is rotating like this. So from BDC to TDC. When it is rotating in a clockwise direction, now this time you are connecting rod, pushing this piston towards up. So as crank rotating, you are connecting rod, applying that force and pushing this piston to move from BDC to TDC. Now imagine whole cylinder is filled with your air fuel mixture, piston is at here and due to crank this piston is pushing upward. So whatever be the charge inside this, it don't have any passage to move out. So this charge gets compressed. So compression start. And this compression will continue till piston reach to TDC because piston cannot move ahead of TDC. So whatever be the piston at a BDC and whatever be the charge inside the cylinder, it compress till it reach to TDC. That means piston complete one stroke from BDC to TDC. That means this time the piston stroke is upward. So it is moving from BDC to TDC. And during this whole operation, the compression take place, compression of air pure mixture. So this is called compression stroke. So this is second stroke. Now here we are showing some dots. That is mixture is there. When we compress any mixture, it becomes dense. So when in this second stroke we are showing dots, so show these dots. Little bit dense. Density should be 
more as compared to your suction stroke. So it showing that actually that mixture get complex. So it is dense. Now during this compression stroke, this is a compression stroke. What happened now? You are crying. Move through another one eighty degree. That's why your crank rotated through three sixty degree, complete three sixty degree. And during this, your crank complete one revolution. Now, what will be my explanation for this diagram? Remember, you have to again label all the parts. That means this is the ball, exhaust ball, sparkler, piston, cylinder, connecting rod. That all labeling should be there. Now, what will be my explanation? At the end of suction stroke, intake ball get closed, piston reach to BDC. At that time, complete cylinder volume is filled with air pure mixture. When piston start to move from BDC to TDC, that entrap mixture start compression and compressing. And this compression continue till piston reach to TDC. When piston reach to TDC, complete mixture get compressed to very high pressure and temperature. During this piston complete one stroke from BDC to TDC, your crank complete 360 degree and one revolution. So this will be the explanation of this diagram. In addition, you can say that during this intake wall remain closed, the exhaust wall remain closed, sparkler remain inactive. So you can extend your explanation. But at this minimum, what is observed on this diagram, you have to put in words that become your writer for this diagram. Now, first row, where we so air fuel mixture inside the cylinder. Second stroke where we compress this entrap air fuel mixture. Now your total mixture is here only in this gap because piston cannot move ahead. So this total mixture compressed with high pressure and high temperature. Now the third stroke that is called power stroke or expansion stroke. So again, we will use the same scale, put it here and using your two edges, draw two lines. You may use a scale horizontally and match the top edges. Again, match the bottom edges. There must be one intake passage to provide one intake passage. There must be one exhaust passage to remove out the all exhaust gases. These both passages must be closed or open and closed by balls. So in the third stroke also, balls remain closed. So show the wall position as it is closing this opening. So this will be our piston uh, cylinder arrangement. Now inside this cylinder, there is a piston. So show the piston position at the same table. Just make sure that there must be a single stroke gap. Single stroke gap means whatever with the pain or pain seal, single stroke is there, that much thickness you have to leave as a gap and drop piston. There must be a spark plug, so draw at center one spark plug. Then we have to draw crank arrangement. So we will draw one small circle at the center of piston. 
and we will draw a center line then horizontal center line then make sure your crank circle must be at least this diameter so for this you may use a compass so each time your circle diameter will be the same now we have to draw this big circle now again we are keeping the position of piston at the same level so we are just shifting the position now when piston is at top most position that is called tdc the dc top dead center when it is reached to extreme bottom position that is called bottom dead center tdc now in the 3ts flow that is compression piston reach to here your crank start rotating from bottom and reach to this point no doubt again crank will rotate in a clockwise direction only that's when crank will rotate like this but during this movement your connecting rod will now pull down your piston again just like suction stroke but if your crank pulling your piston down then negative pressure will create whatever with the charge get compressed it will start expanding so this time your charge is not expanding due to increase in volume at the end of compression stroke complete charge is compressed to high pressure high temperature and it is here in this gap only at that time spark is ignited as soon as this spark ignited whatever be the compressed air fuel mixture which is already at high pressure and temperature due to this spark it burns and that burning just like a explosion a very tremendous energy is evolved and this burning gases now try to expand because already you compress to this much volume at that time you put a spark and due to that spark your compressed mixtures burn spontaneously that just like a bomb and that all gases which are already at very high pressure they try to expand but your intake valve exhaust valve those so what happen that expansion force is applied on piston and all gases expansion force applied on this piston and piston is pulled down this time we are not pulling this piston with the help of connecting rod this time all these burning gases expansion force forcing this piston to move from tdc to bdc when piston moving from tdc to bdc that time your connecting rod will pull bottom side towards bdc so your connecting rod position will be at 45 degree here so it's simply a replica suction stroke 45 degree on right side compression 45 degree on left side again 45 degree on right side join these two by tangential lines then for crank shaft draw two lines parallel lines towards center then draw outward and make the table tennis bat section so it become a crank and engine is always rotating in a clockwise direction so what happen at the end of compression your spark is produced so remember first stroke we are showing it is 
inactive. Second stroke we are showing inactive, but third stroke we are showing some zigzag. That means this spark is active, and due to this spark, burning takes place of fuel, and there are burning expansion of gases pushing, applying the pressure on piston. So I am showing the arrow on piston. This pressure pushing this piston from PDC to PDC. When piston moves from PDC to PDC due to this expansion of gases, your connecting rod will pull down. And due to connected with the crankshaft, this time this connecting rod will rotate the crankshaft. Previously, this crankshaft is rotated by kick or button start. But once your fuel gets burned, then that burning gases pushing this connecting rod towards the bottom and due to this your crank start to rotate. So when your fuel get burned, your engine started and then after we stop to press that electric button, starting button or giving a kick. That's when your engine is started. So when your engine is started, not during suction, not during compression, when your fuel get burned, that time your engine gets started and now there is no requirement to provide a kick or pressing the start button. So during this, we actually getting a power, power of combustion. So this is called power stroke. And due to this power stroke, and this power is happened due to expansion of these all burning gases. So many times it is also called as expansion stroke. And remember it is not a regular expansion, the tremendous pressure is there. So this power stroke and this will pushing your piston from PDC to BDC because piston cannot move down after PDC, it is the extreme bottom position. So all gases try to push this piston and move it from PDC to BDC. During this, your crank which is at PDC at the end of compression, it will start rotating by combustion and reach to BDC. So during this one stroke, power is obtained or expansion takes place, so it is called power stroke or expansion stroke. So this is our third stroke, power or expansion. So another 180 degree, 1 and half revolution, so here 180 degree, 360, another 180, add this, half revolution, 1 revolution, 1 and half revolution, what will be my explanation for this? At the end of compression stroke, all charge get compressed to very high pressure and high temperature and piston is at TDC. At this time, intake wall and exhaust wall are closed and spark is active. Due to production of this spark with the help of spark plug, this high pressure, high temperature compressed charge get burned and burning gases try to expand and that expansion force applied on piston and it pushing piston from PDC to BDC. So during this stroke, power is obtained due to the burning of combustion. So it is called as power stroke or expansion stroke. During this, it completes so much uh, degree of crank rotation and one and half revolution of crank. So whatever be the observation on the diagram, you just put it in work. So this is third stroke.
so degree wise it is 5 40 degree and 1 and half revolution now imagine when piston reach to btc at the end of power stroke your complete cylinder is filled with exhaust gas now we have to remove all these exhaust gas for that we have a last stroke that is called exhaust stroke because we have to use same cylinder piston arrangement for inducting again a new fresh charge so that our cycle will repeat so again we will use the same scale draw two vertical lines it will show the wall of cylinder make sure the same height again we are showing intake passage exhaust passage spark plug but this time spark plug done its work in power stroke itself so in exhaust stroke spark plug is again inactive there is no spark now in exhaust stroke we have to remove out all the exhaust gases it means the exhaust valve must be in open position so when you draw exhaust valve to show it is inside the cylinder that means the opening is there for removing out exhaust gases but intake valve intake valve still in a closed position because it we are not allow any fresh mixture to suck inside so intake valve is closed exhaust valve is open now to draw piston we will draw at the same position at the midway of the cylinder height then small circle at the center of piston remember when you draw this four stroke so automatically you will understand the concept how it is working what is the position where we have to draw the crank position and why it is there so the concept will be clear so crank shaft now as i said we have to just simply replace the position 45 degree right 45 degree left 45 degree right now this time 45 degree left so each position we have in the same crank shaft length join this two circle tangentially so this become connecting rod then from crank shaft to parallel lines for center then outer strokes and complete it as a table tennis bat this become your crank shaft and as i said engine is always run in a clockwise direction now during this when piston reach to the bdc at the power stroke your complete cylinder is filled with exhaust gases when it is reached to bdc that means your crank is at here now what happens this shaft is connected with one big fly wheel so fly wheel is a heavy wheel so some energy gets stored in that fly wheel so fly wheel is a device which is a storing device for mechanical energy we know battery is a storing device for electrical energy dam is a storing 
facility for potential energy spring is a storage facility or device for kinetic uh, potential energy likewise mechanical energy can be stored in a flywheel now how flywheel is work so take a simple example suppose you have a bicycle and you put that bicycle on a stand and simply you rotate your bicycle wheel completely one rotation and loop it so whether it is instantly stop or it will takes another rotation by its own inertia so it will take another rotation by its own inertia same thing is happen here when power flow happens so lot of energy is there lot of force torque is there so flywheel stores some force some mechanical energy in there in itself and remaining mechanical energy is transmitted to your wheel side so your vehicle will start moving but what is the portion store in that flywheel it is now used to rotate the crank so now crank is rotated by that storing energy of flywheel so at the end of power flow crank is here energy gets stored in flywheel and now due to inertia flywheel rotate this that means here after we don't require to press a start button or kick because your petrol get burn now due to this power flow some energy will store in flywheel and that energy will utilize to run your suction stroke compression stroke and exhaust stroke whenever power stroke happens again it store energy so it will repeat it but by its own so this is connecting rod this time your pdc on crankshaft will be here vdc here bottom dead center if i am showing this top dead center so it will be at top extreme position pdc bottom extreme position that is vdc so when piston reach to vdc at the end of power flow your complete cylinder is filled with the exhaust gas that time intake valve will be open and whatever be the burning gases having a excess pressure due to its own excess pressure all these burning gases as soon as this valve will open start moving out due to self pressure whatever be the pressure inside that burning gases it is pushing piston towards vdc correct but when piston reach to vdc it doesn't mean all pressure is released still that exhaust gas is having a pressure so as soon as the exhaust valve get open due to self pressure all these exhaust gases start to move out and remaining exhaust gases when piston moving from vdc to tdc that is from this to this so at actual it is reducing the volume at actual it is pushing out all the remaining exhaust gases so exhaust gases will push out so some exhaust gases will remove out due to self pressure as soon as the exhaust valve get open and remaining exhaust gases will push out by the piston movement from vdc to tdc during this complete stroke of piston exhaust gases are removed out so this stroke is called as exhaust stroke so this is the final stroke exhaust stroke during this it complete 720 degree and two revolution when now the explanation part of this exhaust stroke at the end of power stroke piston is is at vdc complete cylinder is filled with exhaust gases 
when pistons start moving from VDC to PDC, inlet wall remains closed, but at that time exhaust valve get open. Some exhaust gases are moving out due to self pressure, and the piston movement also assists to push out these exhaust gases through this exhaust wall. And this is continued till piston reach to PDC. When piston reach to TDC, exhaust wall get closed. Remember, whatever be the portion above the TDC level, there will be always a presence of exhaust gas. That means we can't say 100% exhaust gases are removed. No. But whatever be the portion remaining inside this, this is called clearance volume or combustion chamber, you can say. So this portion of exhaust gases will be so small in quantity, so it can be neglected, even though it will mix with fresh air fuel mixture, so it will not have that much impact. We will see in detail when we will uh, go through the uh, detail portion of this in the third unit. Okay. But right now, so exhaust stroke pistons start moving from TDC to PDC. All exhaust gases are removed out, so this is called exhaust stroke during this crank complete 720 degree and two revolution. And at the end of exhaust stroke when piston is at TDC, exhaust wall get closed. Now, hereafter, again piston start from TDC to PDC. So again we will reach to this portion. Piston start from TDC to PDC at that time. Intake wall is open, negative pressure start set inside the air fuel mixture and cycle will be repeated. So same cycle repeated again and again. At the start initially we have to give a power to rotate the piston with the pop key or button start. Once your petrol fuel gets burned, so it's some power gets stored in a flywheel which is utilized later on to give the motion of piston in suction, compression and exhaust. And it's a power, we have a lot of energy. So some portion gets stored in flywheel, remaining portion is shifted to your transmission line that's meant to uh, drive the vehicle. So once your petrol gets started burning, we have to stop, kick or button start. That's when your vehicle is started. So these are four stroke. Difference wise, observe the differences. In first stroke, intake wall is open, exhaust wall is closed, spark plug is inactive, piston moving from PDC to PDC and total suction take place. Difference in compression, intake exhaust wall are closed and spark plug inactive, but piston moving from VDC to TDC and during this compression take place. In power stroke, intake wall close, exhaust wall close, but your spark plug is active. During this, your spark burn the air fuel, compressed air fuel mixture due to be expansion forces take place. That expansion forces shown by this arrow, which is acted on piston and piston is pushing down from TDC to BDC. So actual power is obtained. And in the exhaust stroke, final stroke, we observe that intake wall is closed, exhaust wall is open, piston moving from BDC to TDC and all the exhaust gases are removing out. So your diagram must be explanatory. And if you are able to draw these diagrams, so no need to memorize how it is working, just put it in word what you 